Hey, how's it going? It's Nancy Gammon. Would you like to surround yourself with beautiful artistic flowers? In this video, I'll help you get started on your own dyed bouquet. We'll be exploring a way of creating dyed flowers on fabric using melting ice and powdered dye. It's super fun. Let's get started. The supply list for this project is a little bit long, so I'll put all of the details in the video description. I'm starting with a piece of 100% cotton fabric. It's been soaking in a soda ash solution for at least 10 minutes. My piece is about 30 inches by 20 inches, and I'm going to fold a bloom into it. The first fold that I make is going to be the vertical line of the flower. So I need to decide what orientation the fabric is going to be in first. And I think I'd like to make um, a bloom that's a little bit off center on a horizontal. So since it's going to be horizontal, this will be the vertical line of the bloom. So I'm going to go in maybe about a third of the way. And fold it like that. Then I'm going to fold it in half the other way. And I'm going to start making triangular folds. So I'm picking up this folded edge, just the top one, and I'm going to line up that folded edge with this folded one and press it smooth here a little bit. Ah, oh, I'm grabbing a string. And then pick up this folded edge and align it with this one. And do that one more time. Pick up this folded edge and align it with the, the one on the end there. So now I have one long skinny triangle and I'm going to make another one on the other side. So I'm going to grab this edge that has all of these folds and flip it over. Grab this folded edge, align it with this side that has all kinds of folds. Take the folded edge, align it, and one more time, take the folded edge and align it. So this is going to make my bloom. This is the center of the flower, and then the petals will go out, and then the foliage. So I'm going to take a binder clip and just clip where I want the bloom to stop. And I can see that I have an edge of a fabric here. I want a little bit of green foliage to show outside of the bloom. So I'm going to stop the bloom at about right there. And I'm just going to clip that while I do the next step. And so that will keep my folds nice. Then I'm just going to kind of blouse out this fabric so that it's not tightly folded and this will kind of help create the illusion that the bloom is in the field of green leaves um, and so I'm just going to try and loosen this and also it sort of helps the edges of the bloom soften and uh, dissipate or melt into the surrounding foliage. So I've got that pretty well loosened up. And now I'm going to set it in my pan for dyeing. So the setup that I like to use is a large plastic tub and then I set on top of that 
a cooling rack like what you use when you bake cookies and then I have a metal baking pan that has a, I've just punched a bunch of holes into the bottom of it and then on top of that I'm going to put some scraps of mat board that my friend Amy Bryce gave me and these help keep the fabric off of the metal pan if it was sitting directly on it it may pick up the patterns of the holes which is interesting but that's a different video so right now I'm gonna use the mat board to keep the fabric off of the pan but it's going to dye as well and I'm going to get some neat dyed papers out of that so then I'll arrange my bloom on top of the mat board and I'm going to cover it with some damp fabric to protect it sometimes not all of the powdered dye uh, melts it can get kind of clumpy and so I want to protect it from spots so this is a used makeup remover towelette and I'm going to put this over the bloom I'm going to remember that that's the center and then here's the flower um, and that is going to end right there and this using kind of a different fabric for the bloom will help me get the dye in the right spots so I'm going to put that there and remove the binder clip and then I just have a couple other pieces of damp fabric that I'm going to use to cover up this area where the foliage is going to be and I'm going to then cover this with a layer of ice and sprinkle on a powdered dye and so as the ice melts the color is going to go down through these protective cloths and dye into the fabric and it will just keep melting and it will hit the paper dye the paper and then run off of that and through the holes and then collect into the plastic bin at the bottom so now I'm going to cover it with ice cubes Okay, so I am aim to just get just enough ice on to cover the project. If there's too little ice, you just don't get as nice of an effect. If there's too much, it tends to dilute it. And, um, and again, not quite so nice of an effect. So it's like just, just covered. Um, and now I'm ready to sprinkle on the dye. So I'm gonna set my ice aside here. And I'm going to start from the center of the bloom and work my way out. So in the very tip there, I'm going to put just a little bit of a brown color called Brazil Nut. And this will create a, a little bit of darkness at the center of the flower. I probably got too much on there. And I'm also going to put a little bit of lemon yellow at the tip and if you like you can look at an actual picture of a flower and observe the layout of the colors as you make your choices and I'm gonna make a nice bright red bloom I'm gonna use a color called Chinese red and I'm remembering that it's going to stop about right there so I'm going to just sprinkle this along the length of the bloom here and since flowers are often a slightly different color in the center and on the edges I'm also going to add a little bit of a color called Ron Burgundy just at the edge of the bloom up here at the top and that will kind of help define it uh, with a color change and maybe help it look a little bit more natural I hope. Then for this foliage area I'm going to use three colors of green sprinkled in 
I'm going to start with a wasabi. And then I'm going to add a nice bright one called lime pop. And then a little bit of a color called Kingfisher Blue, which is kind of a sprucey, mermaidy color. And I like to have a little bit of that darkness in the foliage as well. And that takes care of that. So now we'll let this rest for about 22 hours. So you'll need to find a way to entertain yourself. Alright, here's how our project looks about 24 hours later. You can see there's still some clumps of powdered dye on the protective cloth. I'm just going to set that aside here and we'll see how our bloom is looking underneath. Ooh, a nice, nice rich red there. So I'm going to lift this out and you can see the really interesting designs that got created on the paper underneath. I'm going to set this aside and we'll unfold the fabric here and take a look at what our results are. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take this to the sink. Oh my goodness. Wow. Look at that. I'm going to take this to the sink and rinse it in cold water. Um, until the water runs clear. Get out as much of the dye as I can. And then I'm going to wash it in hot water with a special kind of detergent called textile detergent that's designed to really loosen up any remaining dye that's in the fabric and get rid of that. And then I'm going to rinse it in cold water with a little sploosh of a product called Retain. And that's going to set the dye and make the fabric color fast so that then it can be washed in cold water and thrown in the dryer like anything else. If you'd like step-by-step -step instructions for this process, please watch my video called How to Make Kaleidoscope Dyes. I go into all the details there, and I'll put a link to the video at the end of this one so you can reach it easily. But I'm going to go ahead and do this washing and rinsing behind the scenes, and I'll get back with you. Here's the completed fabric. It's been rinsed, washed, set, dried, and then pressed with a really hot iron. I'm super pleased with how vibrant the colors stayed in the bloom. Both sides of the fabric are different. There's not necessarily a right or wrong side, um, but I kind of prefer this one. This side kind of has some strong lines here on the flower that I don't care for so much, and they didn't really show up that strongly on the other side. So. The fabric uh, is color fast now. It can be washed in cold water and thrown into the dryer. And it could be framed or mounted. Um, or somebody might enjoy going in with some machine stitching and hand stitching to create some texture or little details or depth to the piece. Hey listen, if you'd like to create your garden together, head on over to my website at nancygammon.com where you can check out the current list of workshops. Do 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 do